talk to me about this rocket. This is this is really the proof of the pudding here, right? Yeah, so this is sort of what some people are calling SpaceX's Wright Brothers moment. This is a rocket that, you know, they flew it to space, they landed it on a drone ship last year, then they spent about four months refurbishing it, checking out all the engines. Now they're going to try to refly it again, and the latest I've heard is that the launch is slated for late Thursday from Cape Canaveral. Uh, is it weather? I was actually down that way this week. It looks like the skies are pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, there's always a risk of weather, um, and, and you know, and you have to get clearance from the Air Force to fly, and you know, sometimes people in luxury boats are trying to be looky loos, and so I mean, launch dates always slip, um, but the latest is that it's slated for late Thursday, so we'll just have to see how the weather holds. Do we have any idea if I mean, the, the notion is that this will ultimately be cheaper, but do we have any notion of how expensive these launches are, and if the reusable lock, rocket actually saves a lot of money? Well, it's interesting, neither SpaceX nor the customer, which is SES, the communication satellite company out of Luxembourg, have said what the price is. But the CTO of SES did tell me that they got a cheaper launch for being first in line, for being longtime customers, kind of willing to go first. We know from SpaceX's website that a typical launch is roughly $62 million, but there's a discount if you buy you know, launches in bulk. And for a recycled rocket, it should be, should be cheaper. I would love to know exactly what the price is. Uh, no one has disclosed that. If you want to let me know, let me know. But, um, <laughs> you know, ultimately, the goal is to really reduce the costs, not just for SpaceX's customers, but for SpaceX itself. I mean, they want to send people to Mars. In order to do that, you've got to be able to kind of fly a rocket, turn it around, bring it home, and fly it again. So this well, is really the first yeah. step towards that ultimate goal. And it's interesting because, you know, the Falcon 9 isn't, uh, it is rocket science, but it isn't the most uh, advanced, cutting-edge rocket in, 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 the, in the world's fleet, right? Well, no one else has reflown a rocket before. Right. I mean, what the, what happened with the space shuttle was different. If they're able to do this, on, pull this off this week, fly this to space, and then land it again, I mean, that'll be a big milestone. You know, every, everyone is talking about reusability. Bezos is talking about it. ULA is now talking about it. But no one's actually done it. So, you know, all last year was about can they recover the rocket? Can they hit this drone ship landing? Can they land it on land? They've now done that eight times: three by land, five by sea. So, so now they have to prove that these rockets are reflyable. And, you know, the, the analogy that people always use is 747s. You and I can fly from San Francisco to New York. The plane lands, the crew cleans it up, they refuel it, and then it flies back to the West Coast. That's ultimately the goal for rocketry. But you're talking about some pretty serious thermodynamic events that go on when a rocket goes into space. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how does the engine do? How do the engines yeah. do? And how many times can you refly it? Like, what's the... What's the lifespan of a rocket once it's reused? All Can new stuff. All new yeah. stuff is going to be fascinating.